I want you to all to go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Since we're all spiritual and everything, I believe the Lord is getting us ready for a mighty outpouring of his spirit. The spirit of God, every time that we congregate at church and pray, it's getting stronger and stronger. And I know I say that, but that's just the way it is. It's just getting stronger and stronger all the time. Because without the strength of God, we're not going to make a difference. We have to be strong in the spirit. We have to be strong in the power of God. Amen. And notice that when Jesus gave strength to the disciples, he didn't give them weakness. No, he said, this is going to be power. You're going to have power to heal the sick and cleanse every disease known to mankind. You're going to raise the dead. I'm going to give you authority to call their spirit back. You're going to, bring, you're going to preach uh, not only salvation to the captive, but freedom to the captive. Amen. Those that are bound, that they don't have to be bound anymore. Amen. Those that are poor, they don't really have to be poor. When I say poor, poor to the place that you can't pay your bills anymore. God's going to give each one of us a way out of every situation. Not... We're all not going to be billionaires in the Lord, millionaires in the Lord, but we're all going to be taken care of by God big time. Now, I want you to see that we all have a place to, to, to operate in God. Now, I don't care what you've ever been taught in the past. I want you to listen to me today because these things I know to be true. The Spirit of God wants to work through each one of us. Each one of us has, has a particular call. God wants us to be carriers of the presence of God. And to do that, we have to walk in what God has called us to do. And it will happen. It will happen. Some of you have several gifts in your life that you, God wants you to walk in. And he wants you to do that he, he, because he knows you can do that. Amen. One gift isn't enough for many people. Two gifts are not enough. Maybe a half a dozen gifts is what God wants you to walk in. And it's up to you to figure out what those gifts are. Amen. Otherwise, how will you please the Lord? How will you rise up? Amen. And be acceptable unto God. How will you have the glory of God resting on you? If you don't walk in the glory of God in the call that you have, amen? The problem is that so many people are lost when it comes to this. They're lost to their call and God plead, he puts it out there again. He's putting this out because I've preached this before, but he's putting it out again. He wants us to bring the presence of God into people's lives. How can you do that if you don't walk in your call? Because that's the only way you're going to bring the presence of God into other people's lives. Amen. So if you ever had to pray for anything, pray for this, that you would walk in the thing that you're called to walk in. Amen. The supernatural and even in the natural. God has given a lot of gifts to people in the natural and we need to use them. We need to use them. Because that's how we get to a lot of people. Some people are really good mechanics. That's how you get to people. I'll fix that for you. You do that for me? Yes, I'd do that for you. I'll do that. That we'd be willing to do it. We'd be willing to pray for people. We'd be willing to look like a fool and stand up and say, you know what? I can pray for you. That we don't care about that sort of thing, looking like a fool. You say, well, what if it don't work? Well, what if it don't? What if you missed it? Wouldn't it be better that way? Keep missing it and then all once you get it right, all once you get it right, you'd have more testimonies than anybody else. Amen. That's the truth. Now in uh, Romans or 1 Corinthians 12, he says, now there are diversities of gifts, but it is the same Holy Spirit. You know why he says it's the same Holy Spirit? Because they had a lot of, a lot of um, paganism, and every spirit did its certain thing. Just like we're supposed to do a certain thing, but there is one God. There is one God with us. He is the God 
that made heaven and earth. Amen. Now there are diversities or there's many gifts, but it's the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but it is the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God that works all in all. He says it three different ways here. But the manifestation, manifestation means when God comes alive through you. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit everybody else around you. I will say this, that if you walk in that gift, that gift will walk in you. It'll work for you as well as it's working for other people. The, pro, the thing is, you don't want to use it too much to, just for you. You want to use it more for other people, amen? Whatever that gift is, and we're going to go into those gifts. But it's so important. It's so important that you walk in that. Because when that anointing of your gift rises up in you, the power or the yoke of darkness that's inside you will break. People say, why can't I get free? God says, all you got to do is get under the anointing. Well, who's anointing? Pastor Lester Blester? No, you're anointing. The psalmist plays songs and all once the depression lifts off of them. The intercessor intercedes and all once in the presence of God, they get deliverance. The dancer starts to dance, and what happens? They get delivered while they're dancing, and the presence of God sweeps the place. The preacher starts preaching like he never preached before, and people start getting healed. People start getting delivered. People get born again. It is the greatest miracle, but it is only one of the miracles. We need all those other things. In Hebrews it says, let us go on to perfection. Let us go on in Christ. Don't stay where you're at. If you're in the same place you were a year ago, just say, God, that don't work for me. That don't work for me. I got to go on. I got to move on with you. And I pray for that gift. And, and if somebody's laid down the gift and you're operating in the gift that you know that you have in God, Asked for the other person, said, laid it down. Because we know that Jesus talked about the talents that was taken from the guy who only had one thing to do and he was so lazy he couldn't do it. And he had bad things to say about God. He had bad thoughts towards God. I tell you what, if you ever start having bad thoughts towards God, think of yourself as that wicked servant, that unprofitable servant. Whenever you think bad about God, don't think bad about God. Now let's go on here. But the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every man. In other words, the Spirit of God will rise up in you. The Spirit of God will carry you. The Spirit of God will stand up on the inside of you. And it said in the book of Acts that they spoke the word of God with boldness when the power of God hit them. You'll speak bold. You'll pray bold. You'll pray. You'll play the music instruments bold in the Lord. Everything. That's what God is. He's bold. Amen. He don't say, I love you. He says, I love you. So you get it. Amen. For everyone. For to one, Paul says. For to one. He's having an illustration here. For to one Christian is given by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the word of wisdom. That you know the, the, the future. How would you like to have some of that given to you? That you, ab you actually know what's going to go on in your life and in the lives of other people that are struggling. The word of wisdom comes to people. You, you don't call that a wise guy, but they are wise. Amen? They have the wisdom of God inside of them. How precious that is. Like little Jakey that we're praying for this morning. That the word of the Lord would come forth and say just what's going to happen. That you would know in your heart, he's going to be just fine. And it goes on and on to say what he's going to be. What he's going to be one day for the Lord. The whole thing of his future takes over. And somebody gives that word. And lo and behold, it is exactly what happens. 
Say, we, rem we remember we were in church. You were a little baby over in Peoria. We were praying for you. And this, this sister in the Lord, or brother in the Lord, spoke out with a word of wisdom. And comfort was upon the whole crowd. How precious is that word? That's just the first one. It's everything. It's everything. You got to have that word of wisdom in your life working. Somebody, you got to be around somebody who has that word of wisdom. Because if you don't, you get disheartened, amen? God wants you to know. That's why he put it there. He wants you to know what's going to go on in the future. He won't tell you every step, but he'll tell you you're going to be up here about a year from now. You're going to be up here. One day when you start to get gray around the edges, you're going to be doing this. You're going to be doing that. This is what I called you to do. A word of knowledge is, is in the past or the present. Word of knowledge can work. You tell a person what they've been through, you tell them where they're at right now, and usually they always give them a word of wisdom what God's going to do for you. And people go, who could have known that but God himself? Well, there's only one other person that knows all your deep secrets, and that's the devil. Amen? So that's where we got to watch, we got to test the spirits of God. You really want to listen to me, because in the, in the church of God, in the church of Jesus Christ, there's a lot of soothsaying going on. There's a lot of divination. They'll always tell you what you've done, where you're at right now, but they have a real hard time telling you the future. But nevertheless, we need that gift working. Because you know what? The devil knows a little something about your future, but I've seen those people wrong most of the time. In fact, they don't even dive into it. They don't even want to talk about your future because that old, those devils of divination, they just know what's going on right now. They're called familiar spirits. You don't think they're in the church? You don't think they're trying to work through you in your prayer time? You got to be strong in the Lord. You got to have so much power around you that you'd say, I swear I saw one of them foaming at the mouth when he left me. <laughs> You want to have the power of God inside you to deliver you from that stuff. Constantly delivering you from that stuff so you don't have a foolish word. Amen? That your words are true in the Lord. I, and don't thank you because you're a woman that you can't do this. Uh, God has no respecter. There is no Jew or Greek, no male or female. It's all one now. It's all one now. And God uses women. I was watching a, a video, a guy preaching over in India. And guess, guess who was 99% of the crowd? The women. I think there's just going to be women in heaven. Truly, I do. I think, I think there's going to be lack up there. Max, you and I, and John, a few of us here, all of us guys, I mean, we were going to be the only ones up there, I think. The women, they're all going to make it because they're in there. They're in there. I can't tell you how many years. It went decade after decade. Uh, when we were praying in here, it was just me and a bunch of women. <laughs> and old Earl next door, he's gone, bless his soul. He thought something was going on with the preacher. <laughs> Nothing but women in there. I said, Earl, we're not like you. We're different. <laughs> and if Earl's in heaven, he said, I'm really sorry I said that. I really didn't mean it, but I did. And to another, verse 9, faith by the same spirit. We got faith to move mountains for some reason in a situation. And that's actually a lot of times... I, I want you to see here that when God gives you faith like that, and I want you to get this, when he gives you faith like that, it, sometimes it's a word of, of wisdom. I'm going to do this. Oh, God's going to do it. No, but you got to pray, though, because that's where faith comes in. God is showing you he's going to do something, and, you, and lots of times people stop short and they go, oh, I just really feel God's going to do something. Well, why didn't it happen, sister or brother? And God says, I don't know. And God says, well, I'll tell you why it didn't happen. I showed you what you need to pray for, that I was willing to do it. And you stopped short. And the devil got you to quit. And what you were supposed to do is I gave you that faith to be able to use it and storm heaven. 
Go to the gates of heaven and get that thing prayed down. Amen. Well, uh, that's why it, you said it was going to happen and it didn't happen. And that's why it didn't. God said, you never prayed it in. He never prayed it down. Sorry if I'm a little loud today. But you got to pray it in. Thy kingdom come. God says, I, you don't need to pray for the whole kingdom. I gave you one thing to pray. Here today. Pray this one thing in faith. And God, I got faith for this. See, you don't walk in this faith all the time. This faith comes into you about something. And God gives it to you by the power of the Holy Spirit to reach up into heaven and pull that thing down into somebody's life. Amen. He gives you that. That's just not positive thinking. That's spiritual might in the Holy Ghost. That's spiritual might. A lot of people, I say, stop short of that. And they go, I just, I just know in my heart it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. And the guy says, why did it ever come to pass? He said, I was going to live. I, said, I never prayed like I was supposed to pray. See, a lot of people don't know that. All right, so you got that down. Sometimes when faith comes in, you know that you know that you know. That's a thing you're supposed to pray for. And you feel the presence of God in it. Lots of times I've prayed for things and I have felt the presence of God in. And I think, well, God, uh, you're going to answer it that quick? No, no, no. He says, keep praying. I felt the spirit of God in things that I prayed for people. And I'm supposed to keep praying. I'm supposed to keep praying, praying it down. And then when it settles out, that, that, that presence will fade. So you've done what you're supposed to do. A lot of people don't do that. They'll go, wow. We were, we were praying that the church would double. And lo and behold, the church doubled. And, but every time, every time it was brought up, the Spirit of God was there. What was the Spirit of God doing? He was prompting us to pray the prayer. Now the Spirit, now the spirit of God's on this church is going to triple. I don't know how. I don't know when. But I know it's going to happen. What, what are we supposed to do? Every time we, I even speak of it. The Spirit of God moves. What are we supposed to do? Pray that it happens. If we don't pray, it won't happen. Amen? And we want it to happen because we know that where more people are at, the, there's more gifts. There's more input. There's more oneness in the body of Christ. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm the type of guy that'll push everybody into their call. There is no sense in sitting in church hitchhiking. Hey, hey. Would you pray for me? Say, you a hitchhiker? Yeah, now you've been praying? Well, no, I've been, I've been sloughing, but don't you worry about that. I was wondering if you'd pray for me. No, not until you pray. Not until you pray. Maybe I'm not the one that's supposed to pray for you. Amen? A lot of hitchhikers in churches. Amen? We don't hitchhike. Not today, not tomorrow. We don't hitchhike. We got our own vehicle. We might pull up and say, hey, you want to ride? Yeah. I'll give you a prayer. Now get out of here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No hitchhikers. We will hold people. We will love them. Yes, we'll give them a ride, but we have to say, and what's your, where's your vehicle at? Well, my vehicle is over there and I am on a road that I can't drive my vehicle on because it takes a gift that I don't have. Well, brother, what do you do? What's your gift? Everybody I pray on gets healed. Really? How many of you went lean over and say, you know, I've been having a pain between my ears since I was a little boy. <laughs> Well, we we're going to heal you right now with that thing. Amen? And to another, the gifts of healing. Healings. I want you to see that that's plural. That's many healings. Some people have a certain gift in certain areas. Find out what area you're in. Amen? If it's in healing. Say, you know what? I, I, do a lot of, I do a lot of prophesying and uh, uh, words of wisdom, but I do have a, a touch of a gift in this healing in this area. And that's being, that's being keen to the things of God, that you've stepped out and you go, you know what, every time I pray for somebody in this, this area, something really does happen. 
So you know your super gift, you know your medium gifts, and you know your gifts that won't just work once in a while, but you're working them all. You're working them all. Amen? Don't ever think that God won't work because sometimes you said, this one time I'm going to work through you. Just do it. And to another, the working of miracles. Miracles is all different types of miracles. Some people have the ability to do amazing things, pray on backs or teeth or, or whatever, and even hearing. You got to find your place. You got to find your place. You say, well, I'm not smart enough. That's just who God uses. You know, the, uh, the guy that's coming from Indiana, him and his wife are coming this next weekend. I told you, he got kicked out of high school, freshman. I maybe didn't tell you that. He's healed hundreds of people. You know what he got kicked out for? He called in, there's a bomb. <laughs> Stupid kid. Anyway. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something What happened. That's how God uses him. Not to make bombs, no. He says, he says, you know, I just, uh, I never cared for school. And I don't really like talking in front of people. But if I could, if I could just pray for the people he's prayed for and bam, the Spirit of God touches them. Touches them. Now, which is, more, which is important? Well, my preaching to you is important. You got to know. But that's when he comes up and he demonstrates it. Now, I don't want to look at any of you people. He looks down. I remember the last time we had him here, uh, he was, uh, time, the first time he was here, we had him praying for people. I said, well, because that's your place to pray. You just pray for him. You just keep praying for him. One day, bam, it'll hit. Don't ask him to talk. Don't ask, oh, tell us, tell us this, tell us that. And you go, I don't really want to. That's right. People that, people that have a call, they just, some other calls you would think, well, you should be a preacher. Not really. In fact, he don't even like school. He don't like seminaries. Well, how can he, don't worry. He'll never wear the collar for you or nobody else. You know, the white collar with the notch, he ain't wearing it. But I'll tell you what, when you want healing to come, get him. Forget that other guy. Get him. And when God wants to do it, he'll do it through him. Miracles. Worked one on his dad. Told you the story. His dad had a bad spine disease. Uh, after 12 years, tried to, he tried to kill himself. And he's sitting at his dad's house one night. And his, his dad didn't get the job done. He said, Dad, I just feel like I'm supposed to pray for you. God said, now's the time. That man was at the end of himself, his daddy was. He didn't think he could go any farther. And we were over, over there, and we'd, we had visited, not, and I just saw him in the parking lot. Dave, how you doing? Well, still hurting, and he couldn't hardly move. Well, then I heard later he tried to, tried to eliminate himself. He just couldn't stand this world no longer. The pain was too great. You ever feel like that? That's where God took that man. Twelve years of narcotics, couldn't take pills strong enough. And he was hell to be around at his home. Because narcotics, they do something to your mind. He just had enough. Christian man went to church all the time, but couldn't stand it any longer. He decided, I'm just going to end this whole show. Didn't get the job done, but his son one night sat in his home shortly after that, days after that, said, Daddy, I'm, I think now's the time. I, I th I'm supposed to pray for you. And a miracle happened. A miracle happened. Told back, totally healed through the guy that doesn't want to even look at you and talk to you. <laughs> you hearing me? Through a guy that the bomb squad was called in for. Isn't that amazing? That's who God uses. Don't look for the smarty pants. Amen? 
You're sitting there today, can God use me? And if you're just wondering, probably so. If you're sitting there quoting all the verses and you know them all, just say, well, hang in there. Who knows what God will do? And you know, he used Paul. They said he was so brilliant, he was mad. Amen? Out of his mind. But I'm, I'm sitting here, and I think most of us, we're talking about most of us that are just normal folk. Just normal. Factory workers. Carpenters. Just normal people. People that work in factories. Yes, God will use you. And to another prophecy by, by another. Prophecy is the ability to teach or prophesy the things of the Lord. Concerning the uh, discernment of spirits, without this, without this working in every preacher, his church will be split apart and it will be drowned by the powers of darkness. If that preacher doesn't have discernment of spirits, he won't know up from down. He won't know who's coming in. I was given a church in Peoria, and they invited witches to come in and turn their life around. They came, but they never told them they were. And before they knew it, they had witches and warlocks singing praise. They destroyed the church. 400 strong. After a while, it was down to nothing. Just a preacher and a couple people. And he said, would you come over and take this place over? I'll tell you what happened. The preacher and the people didn't have any discernment. They should have known the first time they walked up to that person and said, well, you, I don't know who that lady is, but boy, well, she got darkness on her. And you don't look at their eyes. You, you feel it in the spirit. First time they led praise, you would say, well, I just felt hell go all through the room instead of the spirit of God. I'll tell you what, there is, uh, hell can be so close to the spirit of God, but it's not the spirit of God. It's not the spirit of God. Preachers can sound so good, but it's not the spirit of God. You got to know. You got to have discernment. That's one thing you can say, God, let me know. I've been led down the rabbit patch so many times in my life, going this church, that church, this church, that church, and say, I don't know. I don't really know what's what. Discernment of spirits. Diverse kinds of tongues. Different tongues. All different. Given a word and the interpretation thereof. And he says, but all these work at that same one self-spirit, the same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So I want you to know you're sitting here today and you got a call in your life. Let the teacher teach and let the dancer dance. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is, stay humble. Be strong in the power. And I want to tell you something. Stay innocent. I'm innocent. You know, you stand before the judge. No, I haven't done anything. At the end of the day, you look at God, you go, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. I made it through the day. Never gave in to that darn temptation. I didn't give in. I didn't cause a ruckus. I didn't do any of that stuff. We need to bring, we need to carry the presence of God. I want you to see here. Um, think how important this is in the church. Go into Acts. I want you to see here and we're going to flip, we're going to run right through. In Acts chapter 5, it says, Peter answered, uh, verse 11, we know, we know the story about Ananias and Sapphira. They came in the church lying. I'll tell you what. I thank God that God hasn't killed me yet for lying. But I don't make it a practice to lie. And I'll tell you what. I don't lie. I'll just get right there. I don't lie. If somebody asks me a question, I might, not, I might not tell them everything I know. Because it might not be the thing to do. But uh, I'm not going to lie. But he, Peter... 
man carrying the presence of God. He was a man carrying the presence of God. And when this, this woman came in, he said, whether you sold the land for so much. And she goes, yep, we sold it for that much. And she fell dead. She fell dead by the power of God. Peter was carrying the presence of God with him. He says, you lied to God. I thought I was talking to you, Peter. Not today. I carry the presence of the Lord. That's you. We just carry the presence of God. And it says, great fear came on all the church. Don't go be going to that church and tell them a fib. How many know that's important that we got that in the church? That, that stopped the lying that day. All those false testimonies. Oh, I want to give a praise. Did that really happen that way, brother? Well, you kind of stretched the truth, didn't you? Well, I'm going to tell you what. Don't even think about it. Because we got a man and God in here that carries the presence of Almighty God. Jesus went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He took Peter, James, and John with him. It says, and Jesus said, you're going to see the glory of my kingdom come before you even die here. Six days later, he took them on up there. And in the presence of them all, Jesus, hit everything shined. It was called the Mount of Transfiguration. His, his face shined like the glory of the sun his his clothing was white and you know what happened with that manifestation the glory cloud of God came over Peter and them because they weren't quite sure what they should do in a situation like that and you know what he said that manifestation was uh, was on Jesus the reason why that happened because in the cloud it said, listen to this man, every word he says. Because you know what? I think some of the words Jesus was saying is going in one ear and out the other. That's why the glory is coming into the house of God. Because some people just aren't listening. Amen? What did he preach about? I don't know. Well, you just got in the car. Uh, it was something, you know. We need to walk in our call. So anyway, Stephen comes along, and he's doing signs and wonders before the people of God and the Pharisees in the church got a hold of him. And it said, when he was telling the story about the patriarchs and what was going on in Israel, it said, here it comes again, his face shined, shone like an angel. He says he had an angel face on him. The glory of God was so on him. And he was the one that says, I see the heavens open, and I see the Father and the Son of Man standing at his right hand. And it said that that was just too much for the Pharisees. How would you like to be too much for the Pharisees? For once and for all, that you would have the stage to stand on and say, oh, this is the truth. This is the truth. They had to kill him. But I tell you what, everybody saw the glory on his face like they saw it on their Lord, like they heard about it with Moses. You know that thing with Jesus? It is amazing. You know how Elijah was taken up? He never died. You know when, when Jesus was there talking to Moses and Elijah, you know how, how, how many years that had been? Well, probably four or five, maybe a hundred no, it was a thousand years with Elijah. It'd been a thousand years. He'd been gone. And there Jesus is talking to him, and he's in his flesh because he never died. But there's Moses right next to him talking to Jesus, talking to him. And how many years do you think it was since Moses died? 1,700 years. You even said, hey, Moses. Been in heaven a long time? I have a sneaky feeling it says, well, I think I just got here. We've been here for a while, but it don't seem like long because there's no time up here. 
Moses looked just like he looked the day he died. Probably he looked like a young man by that time. Isn't that cool? I wonder what they talked about. Wouldn't you like to got in on that conversation? Wonder what they had to say, because we know that they don't come down to just to chew the fat, right? People do, but they they came for a reason. Want to talk to you, Jesus? Jesus said, "I know. I was led up here, and I've got these three characters with me." <laughs> You know what? They turned out to be the greatest three characters. You know, it was amazing. He did have 12, didn't he? 12 disciples. But these guys, they had a higher calling. They had a mighty calling. They were called to go to the mountain. I want you to see this. And you know something about Peter? He was a man that could just walk by people. Bam, they get healed. He wouldn't even pray for him. He just walked by him. Spirit of God was coming off of him. He was a carrier of the presence of God. Boy, if you could pray for anything, pray that you'd be that too. Amen. And I, I have to mention here quickly about the woman that did, su did such a mighty act. Remember the woman with the alabaster box of ointment? She came in, Jesus was in Simon the leper's house, and she came in, and she broke it, and she poured it on the head of Jesus. And the disciples, they didn't understand, they go, wow, this is expensive stuff. This is Chanel number 10. We could have sold it and fed the poor. He says, you always have the poor with you. You know that. They're going to be needy tomorrow, but you don't always have me. Don't do this to this woman, this good deed that she's done. You know, I talk about women. Thank God for women. Amen. Mother's Day is coming up next weekend. And whether they're a mother or not, I tell you what, it should just be Woman's Day in the church's way. Look at, what she, look at what they've done. They've been the backbone in so many cases. They've been the backbone of things. And she, she poured that on Jesus' head, represent. He said, she'd done it for my burial. That, I, that there would be no stink from me at all. When death sets in, she did it for my burial. And he says, wherever the gospel is preached, wherever it's preached, we're going to talk about this woman that did this mighty thing. How many know that that was her call? She had one thing to do, and she did it. And nobody was going to stop her from doing it. She walked right in and gave God her best. That's what I'm talking about here today. Give God your best. And what's your best? The gift that he's giving you. The gift. The gift. There is a gift inside you, says the Lord. Each one of you. That says the Lord. He just spoke through me. There's a gift inside of each one of you. All you got to do is... Get in the presence of the Lord. It'll start coming out. You'll start, if you're in the presence of God, when you go out, you'll say, well, my, my job is to encourage people, and something comes over them. Something happens to them. Supernatural. They are truly encouraged where they were never encouraged before. Neglect not the gift that is in you, Timothy, which was given you by prophecy with the laying on of hands by the presbytery, and the presbytery are the elders. It was given to you. Don't neglect it. 
It was given to you by the elders of the church. They fasted, they prayed, and they laid hands on you, little Timothy, and preach it. You might have something inside you that you just need somebody to, a man of God to pray on you, woman of God to pray on you, and that thing comes alive, blossoms. Blossoms, boom, wow. If you came up here today and you said, you know, pastor, that's what I need. Whatever gift is in me, pray for me that it would rise. Now, I'd never neglect it. I've seen people know what their gift is and actually neglect it. Now, I'd pray for them again to get it back. Left them. Grieved the Holy Spirit. And he left them. The gift. They go, I know I've let it down. I'll never do it again. Bam, it comes back. Paul said in Romans 1.11, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end, ye may be established in your faith. I got my job too. You know what my job is? To find out what gift is either to be imparted to you by the word of knowledge or what gift you already have in you, that it be energized. Whew. And you rise up. It's the truth. God wanted you to hear this today. I don't know how many different ways I can say it, but here it is. Said a little different, but one more time. 